session is called South, 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 North and Triangular Collaboration, which I had to have explained to me. But it essentially means that everyone's got a lot to offer in collaborating on learning and exploring uh, value. And this clearly then says instead of re, um, recreating the wheel to actually learn from others as, as it turns. Everyone knows Shashank, he's the Hello. senior e-government specialist in the World Bank, has, has a finger in many pies and is enthusiastically looking to uh, recognise how digital solutions can be one part of the jigsaw in, in um, delivering on smart cities. We have been working in the urban space uh, as uh, <clears throat> through bank projects both at the state level as well as uh, with the central ministry for uh, a long time now and uh, we've supported both the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and the states, uh, several states in India in terms of bringing urban reforms and use of ICT in their day-to-day uh, -day operations. These are all uh, very nice ideas, very nice implementations, but they are in bits and pieces all across the country. We have not been able to really mainstream, standardize, and everybody seems to be doing their own thing. Even the good practices within the country have not been shared across with uh, other municipalities or other uh, states. So there is this big gap in terms of uh, knowledge or sharing of uh, good practices and solutions. So that is one big challenge which we have. Also, when we started looking at the smart city solutions and the various uh, good practices, we found that there is so much knowledge across the globe. And anybody trying to do something on their own without looking at what has already been done is not being smart at all. So this is the real challenge right now, and this is the whole idea behind this collaboration where we have now so many countries participating, so many experts from across the globe. And on the other side, we need a partnership and collaboration uh, among the 100 smart cities. I don't think the, the way it is being done now and where each of the 100 smart cities are trying to implement and st are struggling to implement these uh, solutions and initiatives on their own is a very smart way of doing it. So I think this is the big question which we have today, that how do we bring everybody together, how do we collaborate, and how do we share uh, the knowledge which we bring on the table. Dr. Marcello, Marcellino um, Pandon is the policy advisor uh, for UCLG ASPEC and as an architect by training but has been drawn into some other interesting roles in capital market and cities finance. Yeah, I'm an architect by training but now my responsibility on uh, economic security uh, related to uh, food security, uh, energy security, and also urban and city security, which is very much relevant to the concept of smart cities. In regard to collaboration, I think uh, there are three things, uh, just to make it short, that uh, we need to pay attention to, to make a healthy and working collaboration. The first one is um, uh, strategic fit. The second one is uh, cultural fit. And the third one is operational fit. We need to fit uh, between buyers and sellers. Uh, not necessarily products, but also ideas. A healthy collaboration is basically based on the culture of sharing, not owning or controlling. Not only sharing knowledge, but also sharing profit, and sharing benefits, and also sharing risks. Operational fit means, um, oh, but let me give you uh, an illustration. Your company, uh, could make a decision, a private sector, yeah, within one day or one week. Whereas your target customer, which is, I assume, basically local government, they might need one month or three months uh, time to make a, a, process, a, a decision because they have to follow the bureaucratic procedure. And my last point is, under the operational fit, we need to pay attention of the risk of color. Uh, collaborative partnerships, uh, for instance, dependency, uh, uh, security of data, and who is controlling, and also changing objectives. Maybe different city mayors, different regions, 
will have a different priorities. So the changing of this objective may also change the nature of the collaboration. Thank you so much. We now have Ms. Chatanya Tupaki, who is the communication specialist for UN Habitat India. She's spent nearly three years working for system change in urban India. Um, a little on the essentials of the new urban agenda to begin with. UN Habitat is the focal point for the monitoring, evaluation, and the implementation of the new urban agenda. Uh, while the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development Goals represents the what and how much, the new urban agenda represents the how and is a blueprint of action towards making progress uh, to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, especially SDG 11, making cities sustainable, resilient, inclusive, and safe. Building on the strong evidence that sustainable urbanization is an accelerator to achieving the SDGs, UN Habitat has adopted a more strategic and an integrated approach to responding to the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century cities and uh, human settlements in its recalibrated strategic plan of 2020 to 2025. The four main roles of the organization could be summarized as think, partner, act, and share. Uh, this reflects the importance of evidence-based advocacy, uh, strategic partnerships, collaborative stakeholder implementation frameworks to achieve enduring results in sustainable urbanization and for a more system-wide approach to development. Uh, as priority areas, we want to engage with the private sector to accentuate their impact in the achievement of the urban dimensions of the SDGs and also strengthen the voice of uh, local governments as they are the closest in governance structures to citizens. The Government of India and the United Nations in India have jointly signed the United Nations Sustainable Development Framework. The agreement is a reflection of uh, India's commitment uh, to fulfill the global development frameworks and uh, also fulfill the premise of the 2030 Agenda that is to leave no one behind. Uh, the UNSTF requires the UN to report on progress made towards planned outcomes, uh, thus underlining the need for uh, government, private sector, community partnerships to act on scale. We want to highlight here the opportunity for India uh, to showcase its knowledge, thought leadership, innovations, best practices strategically at the World Urban Forum with the One India Pavilion to, uh, you know, to uh, mark its high-level presence as a global powerhouse uh, so that the rest of the world can learn from it. Thank you. Well, my agency is the project planning arm of uh, US government, and we were tasked uh, after the bilateral discussion between the two leaders in 2014 to take up three cities in India uh, and help them become smart, which is a very variable definition. And uh, being the project planning agency with experience of doing technical assistance, we had to collaborate our work of transportation, energy, water, and other sectors and see how we can help a city like Wysak, and the commissioner was here and he talked a little bit about the Wysak smart city become smart. And the other two cities we had under the MOU which exists is uh, Ajmer in Rajasthan, a very heritage city, and Allahabad or now rechristened as Prayagraj in Uttar Pradesh. What we really appreciate and Shashank touched about that is how we bring on the capacity for everyone to share knowledge. So what we have done till date is to do a lot of capacity building in these two other cities where we have worked, uh, bring them to US, show them the models. Vizag has also been to US, find their pair and partner cities where we can work. Where we are now in the three cities where we are working in and kind of looking at more partner cities where US can come forward and bring in specific assistances, leverage multi-donor and other sources of financial support for smart city initiatives. Looking forward to sign an MOU with World Bank to work more on capacity and try to share our experiences of where we have come in this journey. I would really uh, look forward to see Jane that how we are going to see the implementation so that in 2020 Smart Republic, we are talking of the implemented smart city projects. Now let me start with give you, giving you a few examples of the different levels that we as the Netherlands work when it comes to smart city partnership. Now the first 
level is obviously the government to government level, right? Where we engage as a Dutch government together with the Indian government, be it at state level, be it at city level, but be it most of all at central level. We work under an MOU that we have with the Ministry of Urban Affairs and which is done in a, let's say, well, the way these, uh, let's say, bilateral MOUs are being implemented on a basis working together. The second level is a cooperation between cities. Uh, for instance, the city of Rotterdam has a tie-up with the city of Surat in Gujarat, where they work on resilience, and Amsterdam, the city of Amsterdam, has an MOU with the state of Maharashtra, where they work on solid waste collection. Then as a third level, we have Dutch knowledge, knowledge institutes that have tie-ups with Indian counterparts. And I think we have one uh, representative here, which comes from the Institute of Housing Studies in Rotterdam, which is one example of a Dutch knowledge institute engaging with Indian knowledge institutes. And then, of course, we have Dutch companies that have tie-ups with Indian cities who try to pitch their solutions that they have for smart city challenges, like, for instance, uh, traffic management systems. We have a company here in uh, Trivandrum that produces traffic management software that is being rolled out in India and in the Netherlands. And we have, of course, Philips Smart Lighting. We don't have that, let's say, muscle power. We're a bit smaller. We don't bring the finance to the table. But what we do is try to basically connect the dots. And that is where we as an embassy come in. We try to see what happens here, try to identify the bond, and sort of link that up to technology providers, knowledge institutes, or even government, official, government institutes back in the Netherlands. Uh, sometimes it works. And sometimes we come to realize that we rely a little bit on uh, somewhat stronger partners like the World Bank. So that may be, as a final word, uh, very excited to have done this together with the World Bank. I think for us it was a fantastic experience. Ashank and your team, you have been working very hard with Priya, most of all, of the embassy. And I think this is uh, certainly an experience that was useful for us. And uh, we look forward to taking this uh, to the next level next year. Um, that's it for my end, Jane. Yeah. Our next speaker is not unknown to you. <laughs> um, Mr. Ravi Rajan Guru has um, spoken to us already and is a key partner uh, with the World Bank, the All India uh, Institute of Local Self-Government. I'll be giving uh, maybe a five, six slides where we'll talk about the how ALAZ has been uh, doing all these activities since long time and how it's really getting benefit out of that. If you look at the one aspect of uh, uh, in, uh, integrated capacity building programs, uh, today uh, we have uh, last year more trained more than 9,000 government officials on the various aspect of the town planning, urban finance, administration, and that's definitely going to help the cities to implement the various projects and activities. So looking into the collaboration part, uh, we're going to the uh, urban local bodies level and uh, uh, making sure that the, whatever the government of India's missions are happening, it should be, you know, ALAZ can play an important role for the implementation of these projects and programs. So these are the, some of the glimpses where uh, the, one of the forum that's been created by the uh, ALAZ South Asian Mayor Forum. And there we are actually, may, trying to bring the cities every year at least once uh, at one platform and meet and discuss and debate. So uh, these, these are the various approach and methodology that we are actually working on that part. Last but not least, uh, we have uh, Mr. Hassan Wahid, who is Assistant Director of Local Government Authority in the Republic of Maldives. Maldives is a very small country. It's almost, uh, population is almost four lakh. And land area is also very small. It's a developing country. So collaboration is very need for people uh, like us. In uh, Maldives, and uh, it's a developing country member, I believe it is very important to collaborate with other stakeholders, agencies, to expedite development of smart and sustainable cities. I also believe that with a successful multi-stakeholders collaboration, Everyone will be able to benefit from outstanding technical experts from around the globe. Yes, I believe we are small in terms of uh, land area, population, but we are trying to bring smartness and sustainable cities to our nations with the help of other agencies. That's all. <laughs> Thank you. That's the diamond star. I've been told on a number of occasions, and it, I think it works for us all over the last two days and into the future. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. 
and uh, with our partners in this room and across India and the world. We look forward to helping smart people make smart decisions for smart cities. Thank you so much for your involvement, attention, and look forward to seeing you in one of these forums and on the ground again. Thank you.